I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed the Constitutional Republic of the United States, and to that republic for which those gorgeous red, white, and blue stars and stripes stand, one nation under our only God, Yahweh, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Now, please, this is no disrespect to our Pledge of Allegiance. Any of you who have done any research on the Pledge of Allegiance know that it did not have under God in it. As a matter of fact, it was already being taught to our children back way back when, when it first came about. And the word, the uh, phrase under God was not even in the Pledge of Allegiance. And the school children were taught to lift their right hand as a Hail Hitler type sign. And it was our President Eisenhower who inserted the phrase under God. Therefore, um, I choose not to disrespect my nation, not to disrespect my flag. I choose to pledge allegiance to the one who gave me breath to be able to live in this nation that has represented truth and righteousness up until the last few decades. And it looks as though we're making a turnabout from everything that I'm looking into in the back channel news that there are military alliance along with our President Trump, Vice President Kennedy, and the many others who are working in other nations with this alliance to bring about um, a respect and a cease to this child trafficking international, this evil international multi-trillion dollar business that's gone on um, with Satanists for years. So, I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed my now constitutional republic of the United States. In other words, we are no longer United States, Inc. We are no longer a corporation. We are no longer slaves to the laws of United States, Inc. We have been made a republic to do unto others as we would have them to do unto us. We honor the one who gave us breath to be able to uh, live in a nation that has been the most beautiful nation represented by a banner, a flag, that when wars were fought, and most of them were um, political wars that should never have been, but the flag was established on the battleground that was won. And there have been many to give their lives for holding that flag up. Now, this is not to discredit them at all, because deep within their hearts, they had a pride for what our nation stood for. That we were one nation under God, but which God? You know, there are many gods. And the name of our God, Yahweh, has been removed from his word. From just about every English version that exists from whatever language it derived from. And we know that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob worshipped only one God, Yahweh. And his name has been replaced with Adonai, written in all uppercase letters, Elohim, written in all uppercase letters, Hashem, written in all uppercase letters, Lord, written in uppercase letters, and God, written in uppercase letters. Who had the right to remove his name from his word? Was it those Satanists that Revelation speaks of? They say 
they are Jews, but are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan? Is that who removed his name from his word? That he's a God called by many names? No, 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 no. There's no verse that represents that. He's yes, Yahweh is an Elohim, a God of many attributes, but he has only one name. And that son was given the name above all names, his father's name. Great is the mystery of godliness, for God, Yahweh, was manifest in flesh. Now, please, before you start to shut off that knob, I do not question anyone's experience anywhere ever. That would be completely stupid on my part because the Word teaches me in Habakkuk, Habakkuk, and the book of Romans that unto every man, or for us women, is given the measure of faith. This is from the beginning of time. But what do we do with that measure of faith? If faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word, what Word? The Word of God, the Word of Yahweh. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word. So we build our faith when we hear the Word. But it seems to appear that those who have the tell-a-vision that programs their mind are giving ear to more of mainstream media, uh, things that don't mean a hill of beans to your salvation. They're given over to carnality and whatever pleases their flesh to where their faith, their ears are not hearing the real word. Because how can you hear without a preacher? And how can you hear except he be sent? There's a lot of preachers, a lot of ministers, a lot of teachers throughout the earth. But what are they teaching? If we've only got one scripture, one scripture, why is it that we have many labels of human beings that were never given labels by the scripture? You know, they would never were called Christians at Antioch. No, never were. No, 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 no. That word Christian, you break it down, it came from Rome. Sure did. Christ, Christian, that came from Rome. And the city, Vatican City, was one of the foreign entities that has ruled the nations for decades. The other foreign entity that ruled the world for decades was the city of London. And the other foreign entity that ruled the world for decades, who was the workforce for these other two foreign entities, was Washington, D.C., 10-mile radius. And it never should have been that way. But we had corrupt politicians way back when, before 18, after 1871, that turned this nation over to slavery, to these three foreign entities. So, where are we now? Look at the confusion and the wickedness that has abounded for years and years and years. You know, Hellavision started off as, uh, well, we had radio first, and then there was uh, Hellavision, tell a vision to program your mind, and it started off innocent enough. But over the years, subliminal stuff was inserted. And a little bit more subliminal stuff was inserted. And I can remember, and I'm an aged woman, I can remember when, uh, back before I lived right, about Gone with the Wind, and it had one curse word in it. Boy, everybody flocked to see what that curse word was, and oh! <gasps> There it was. Huh. And look where we... You've come a long way, baby. In the wrong direction. There's a lot of people that need a roll of toilet tissue to wipe your mouth. Yes, you do. 
because you claim to be a biblical believer. But does bitter and sweet water come out from the same fountain? No, no. Well, who are you judging me? Well, my word tells me that I know a tree by its fruit. I can identify a tree by its bark, by its leaves, and by the fruit that it produces. Either the fruit is good or the fruit is bad. And that that comes out of a man will defile the man or for us women. And I speak to the American uh, nation, uh, this constitutional republic, as a woman. She is depicted as a woman. Therefore, I want to encourage you to return to righteousness. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have Second Chronicles 7.14. It says, and I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible first. It might not be just crocodile tears of repentance. You know, there was a lot of that during 911. That was just a slap on the hand. And among other things that's happened. But it says, because the churches were filled, the synagogues were filled, the congregations were filled, everything was filled up, and everybody's saying, God bless America. Well, what happened? Well, it kind of wore off, didn't it? People just kind of drifted back into their own slump of perversion, of filthiness. They allowed their eye gate and their ear gate to be corrupt with evil and foolishness instead of hearing you have ears but do you hear the word of Yahweh if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh and your faith is low and we know unto every man or woman has been given the measure of faith what are you giving your ear gate to what are you giving your eye gate to well, we have to be balanced. No, we got to be overbalanced. Yahweh comes first. His word comes first. He gave us breath. Should we not offer him a sacrifice of praise and seek him in the morning through the night before we go to bed throughout the day? Giving our ear gate, our eye gate, our, our entire five senses to his things? Oh, well, we got to live. That is living. I remember uh, one of my sons years and years and years ago when they were young and at home. Teenagers, you know how teenagers, they, um, they, they think they're adults and they know everything. And I was up here studying. (laughs) And the one son came up the steps and he said, Mama, you need to get you a life. (laughs) I laughed. I said, boy, I got the best there is. I'm involved in it right now. I want to eat drink and sleep the pure word of Yahweh without compromise. And I see this in Yahweh's people, those who claim the name of Yahweh and who even know his name is Yahweh. I'm seeing compromise, compromise, compromise. They compromise in their lifestyle. They compromise in who they marry. They compromise with their children. They give over to things that they know. He that knows to do good and does it not to him, it's sin. But most have been rocked to sleep because they have fed their flesh more than they have fed their human spirit on a day-to-day basis with that which is righteous and holy. And that's a shame to any of us. And I speak this with fear because my flesh is the same as anyone else's. And if we're not for the spirit of Yahweh that has kept me, I could be in the same boat. But my prayer every day is Yahweh direct my day. (laughs) Yahweh deliver me from stupid (laughs) today. Yahweh, if this decision is not right, you cut it off. You stop me. And I have watched him do that. I've watched him do just that for years and years and years. And he has protected me from compromise. Not that I haven't been, uh, had things, you know, uh, we're always tried. We're flesh, okay? And deep-rooted hurts. If you don't watch that thing, that deep-rooted hurt becomes anger. But we know that the word says, be angry and sin not, right? So we're angry 
and we sin not. So, um, that anger ceases. You know, cease from wrath, cease from anger. These verses. We work on us as situations arise, and we're going to have these things test us. We're going to be proven and proven and proven and proven until death do us part. And none of us have yet resisted unto blood. Yet. So where do we stand? Okay. So we pledge allegiance to one God, Yahweh. This is no disrespect to our flag. And I do not disrespect anyone's experience because all have been given the measure of faith. But I'm going to ask you a question. What do you do with that measure of faith? What do you do with it? Are you content where you are? Most people teach only what they've been taught. But have you ever questioned it? That's what's wrong now. We've not questioned these illegal so-called laws <clears throat> that are really not laws and they no longer apply to us because we are no longer under United States Inc. We're under the Constitutional Republic of the United States. So this brings me to some verses that, um, that I had written up and I'm going to flip over here. I'm using a Bible Works program and um, <clears throat> I want to read from the Bible Works program from second peter i started my uh reading from second peter chapter 2 verse 10 but i want to go just before that let me see if i can start in um let's start in second peter chapter 2 verse uh second peter chapter 2 verse 6 and if you hear the clicking and ticking that's my computer and i don't care what it sounds like i'm um more uh concerned about what this word says all right, this is a writing. This is an epistle that was given to those that worshiped Yahweh, not a Shua and not a J name. By the way, where do you find in the first blood covenant again, where the object sacrifice was worshiped? You don't find it. Yahweh was given praise for providing the sacrifice. He provided himself. Great is the mystery of godliness for God. Yahweh was manifest in flesh. That son was given the name above all names. To name that piece of flesh anything other than his father's name constitutes idolatry and breaks the commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. That's not saying you don't have anything. You might have the Holy Spirit. You've never heard this before. Well, I'm going to challenge you like the back channel people challenge you <laughs> they say do your research don't trust what i'm saying do your own research all right so i'm challenge you look this programming about the name of yahweh being returned to his word has been going on this is now i we are into our 38th year my husband jerry kirk who you hear his programs uh before mine he was killed in a tree accident it'll be six years ago this november and yahweh has blessed me to carry on this programming. So let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, and I'm going to read several, several verses here, okay? I'll be reading from the Complete Jewish Bible and from the King James Version. The Complete Jewish Bible is about as close to the Hebrew as you're going to get. But even then, they tried to deceive you because they replaced his name with some kind of Shua name, Adonai title, or Elohim title, and in some of the Israeli versions, Hashem. All right, here we go. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 6. And he condemned the cities of Sodom and Morah, reducing them to ashes and run as a uh, and a ruin as a warning to those in the future who would live ungodly lives. KJV reads, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample to those that after, who those that after should live ungodly. Okay, we got godly and ungodly. So what's godly and what's ungodly? Uh, every man is righteous in his own eyes, aren't they? My husband used to teach where you can walk into an assembly, a congregation, a church, a synagogue, whatever, and you can look at the women and see if the preachers are teaching the truth. Because women are to be modestly dressed, not in an abomination of pants. 
pants were given to the men. You can go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5. It says that a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man, nor a man a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination to Yahweh. Women were keepers at home. That word keep goes back to guard, back to Second Peter here. Okay, so it goes on to say in the seventh verse, and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. That's what the KJV reads. The complete Jewish Bible reads, but he rescued Yahweh. Now listen to this. Yahweh rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the debauchery of those unprincipled people. They were wicked people. They were unprincipled people, but he chose to live there. Why? Oh, it looked good. It looked good. He chose that land. He lived outside the city. All right. Verse 8 says, For the wicked deeds which that righteous man saw, talking about Lot, and heard as he lived among them, tormented his righteous heart day after day. That's what complete Jewish Bible says. And then it, KJV reads, For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So that Yahweh, this word is Yahweh, it's not the Lord, and it's not Adonai. So Yahweh knows how to rescue the godly from trials and how to hold the wicked until the day of judgment while continuing to punish them. That's complete Jewish Bible. Yahweh knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Verse 10, especially those who follow their old natures in lust for filth and who despise authority, presumptuous and self-willed, these false teachers do not tremble at insulting angelic beings. Whoa. That's complete Jewish Bible. I think I'm just going to stay with the complete Jewish Bible so I don't run out of time here. But I'm reading from 2 Peter chapter 2, verses, uh, verses 7 all the way through probably 15, 16, or 17. All right, verse 11. Whereas angels, though stronger and more powerful, do not bring before Yahweh an insulting charge against them. But these people, acting without thinking like animals, without reason, born to be captured, born to be, listen to that, born to be captured and destroyed, insult things about which they have no knowledge. When they are destroyed, their destruction will be total. KJV, KJV reads, But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they don't understand, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Verse 13, They will be paid back harm as wages for the harm they are doing. Their idea of pleasure is carousing in broad daylight, they are spots and defects reveling in their deceptions as they share meals with you. KJV reads, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to not uh, to not in the day uh, um, they, pl they uh, count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Oh, we're not supposed to, we're supposed to be set apart, separated from people like this. This is talking about Lot. He was with them. He heard what they said and done every single day, day in, day out. And before Yahweh brought judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, he brought out Lot and his family. And you know what happened after that. His wife looked back because she longed for that life. Women are a weak vessel. Watch it, women. Watch it better draw close to Yahweh. And what happened to the girls? Huh, they were deceived. They were, they were deceived. They committed incest with their daddy. Shame. Shame. So, this, you know, I thought about something too. It says their idea of pleasure is carousing in broad daylight. You ever heard of somebody say, hey, let's go have fun. Let's go have some fun. Have you ever looked up that word fun? 
It's evil. This is an evil word. <laughs> I did an etymology study on the word fun. <laughs> I know you're, you're going to think, oh, well, you're rolling your eyes. Look, words mean a lot. We do not stand under anyone. Understand? <laughs> the word fun means diversion, amusement, mirthful sport, a cheat, a trick. Okay, it means to cheat, to hoax. Huh. This is bad. It comes from the Middle English form of be fool. B-E-F-O-O-L, be fool. It means to cheat, to jest or joke. What does the word say about that? Not foolish jesting, but rather of giving of thanks. Oh, yeah. This is where this word fun is. So we see from Second Peter 2 and 13 that there are people, they're going to be wrapped up in their own pleasures. Pleasure for a season? Why have pleasure for a season when you can do a turnabout, repentance, turn your complete being over to that tender heart that you used to have? that listened and that thrived and hungered and thirsted for the word of Yahweh only. But over the years, Satan has rocked human beings to sleep. I've seen him and watched him rock people who claim to know the name of Yahweh. You know, we got verses for that. There's going to be those, that, uh, well, the New Blood Covenant says in one place, it says um, that there are go those that's going to stand before him. So, well, haven't we prophesied in your name? And it wasn't a J name and it wasn't a Shua name was the name of Yahweh. Haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we done miracles in your name? And what does he say? You depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. I don't know if I'm going to get through this or not. Okay, let's go to verse 14. For they have eyes always on the lookout for a woman who will commit adultery, eyes that never stop sinning, and they have a heart that has exercised itself in greed so that they seduce unstable people. What a cursed brood. That's complete Jewish Bible. Verse 15 in the complete Jewish Bible. You can read this yourself in the KJV. Again, this is reading for the book of 2 Peter, 2nd chapter. These people have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balim ben Beor, or Baalam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of doing harm. Isn't that what our special forces are rescuing now? Innocent children who have been trafficked over our borders, tortured until their blood is drained out with adrenal chrome that the elites of a multi-trillion dollar business have used. Isn't that what our special forces, our alliances are bringing down now? Wake up, American woman. Wake up. Wake up. But as, but okay, was, but was rebuked for his sin. A dumb beast of burden spoke out with a human voice and restrained the prophet's insanity. Wow. Waterless springs they are. This is verse 17, 2 Peter chapter 2. Waterless springs they are. Mists driven by a gust of wind. Oh my, for them, for them has been reserved the blackest darkness. KJV reads, these are wells without water, clouds that are, that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak, this KJV, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. We can be living in error and not even know it. You know, one that's deceived doesn't know they're deceived, do they? Complete Jewish Bible reads, mouthing grand, uh, grandiosities of nothingness. They play on the desires of the old nature in order to seduce with debauchness, De debaucheries, people who have just begun to escape from those whose way of life is wrong. There's a way that seems right to a human being, right? But in the end, is judgment wrong they promise them freedom it's wicked now the wicked promise them freedom but they themselves are slaves of corruption for a person is slave to whatever has defeated him it's time to rise up american woman 
It's time to rise up in the word of Yahweh, the true word of Yahweh, and the lies and put them behind us. We stand tall. We stand tall in the word of the truth of the living Yahweh. His name has been removed from his word. Return. Search this out what I share with you. This is truth. Until next time, shalom.